Hello CyberMDs and welcome to another lecture. Today's lecture will be covering atherosclerosis. Before we get too far, please remember to like, comment, and or subscribe to our channel so that we can continue to provide high quality free medical education resources to students around the world. All right, let's get started. Atherosclerosis is a specific type of arteriosclerosis. Arteriosclerosis is very simply the thickening of the walls of the blood vessels leading to hardened arteries. There are three main types that you should know about for step one. They are atherosclerosis, arteriolosclerosis, and Monkeberg calcific arteriosclerosis. Let's dive into atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is the most common type of arteriosclerosis. It is a disease characterized by the formation of intimal plaque that obstructs blood flow in large and medium-sized arteries. This plaque is made up of a necrotic lipid core and will consist mostly of cholesterol and it will have a fibromuscular cap over the top. These plaques are often associated with dystrophic calcification. Atherosclerosis commonly affects the abdominal aorta, coronary arteries, popliteal artery, and the internal carotid artery. There are many risk factors for developing atherosclerosis. Modifiable risk factors, which are things that are potentially within our control, include hypertension, diabetes, hypercholesterolemia, and smoking. With regards to cholesterol levels, remember that LDL, or low-density lipoproteins, increase the risk, while HDL, or high-density lipoproteins, are going to de decrease the risk for atherosclerosis. Non-modifiable risk factors, which are things that we cannot control, are going to include gender, age, and genetics. This is going to be a pathology that worsens with age, and males and postmenopausal females are going to be at increased risk. The reason why postmenopausal females are at an increased risk is that estrogen is actually considered protective against this pathology. Therefore, after menopause, when there is a stark decrease in circulating estrogen, their risk is increased. Genetics, again, are going to play a role as well, and family history is going to be highly predictive of risk uh, for patients who may have this condition. The pathogenesis of atherosclerosis occurs in the following steps. First, a stressor such as hypertension will cause endothelial cell damage, which subsequently leads to inflammatory cell invasion of the intima as well as platelet adhesion. Platelets will subsequently release pro-inflammatory substances as well as platelet-derived growth factor, all of which result in smooth muscle cell invasion. These smooth muscle cells, as well as macrophages that are present, will take up cholesterol and oxidize low-density lipoproteins. These lipid-laden macrophages become known as foam cells, and the accumulation of foam cells results in fatty streaks. Afterwards, there is a production of an extracellular matrix, so think collagen deposition. And after all of this, a plaque then exists that is composed of debris and cholesterol and foam cells and the extracellular matrix. Now that plaque can rupture and cause a thrombosis, which may subsequently lead to ischemia and or an infarction. The complications of this condition are extremely prevalent in Western countries. The stenosis can result in ischemia, and collectively, the symptoms are known as atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, or ASCVD. These complications include arterial aneurysms because of a weakening of the vessel wall, and you may see dissections, coronary heart disease, peripheral artery disease, intestinal ischemia. You may even see subcortical vascular dementia, known as Ben Swanger disease, and you can see renovascular hypertension as well. Uh, as aforementioned, you may see thrombosis, uh, which could cause a, like a myocardial infarction or a stroke. And then plaque rupture with embolization results in atherosclerotic emboli, which are characterized by cholesterol crystals within the embolus, as the embolus is derived from the cholesterol of the original plaque. You can see this here on the screen 
right here, you have these cholesterol uh, crystals within this embolus, uh, and that would be characteristic of a cholesterol emboli uh, from a ruptured atherosclerotic plaque. It is important to note that atherosclerosis is a preventable and manageable disease. Proper lifestyle modification, including a healthy diet, regular exercise, smoking cessation, uh, smoking cessation is going to be huge. All of those things can help reduce the risk of developing atherosclerosis. In addition, controlling modifiable risk factors such as hypertension and hypercholesterolemia can also help manage the disease. The primary form of treatment is going to be getting control of those modifiable risk factors. However, when that fails and our patients have known significant atherosclerotic disease and meet certain criteria, or if they have arterial complications, such as a stroke, we're going to be giving them antiplatelet therapies, such as aspirin and clopidogrel, uh, whenever conservative modalities, such as a graded exercise regimen, fails. Uh, th that's a little bit beyond the scope of step one, but I believe it's still worth mentioning. In conclusion, atherosclerosis is a disease characterized by the formation of intimal plaques that obstruct blood flow in large and medium-sized arteries. Risk factors for atherosclerosis are divided into modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors, and the pathogenesis of the disease is complicated with endothelial damage initiating the process. ASCVD, which can have severe complications, is preventable. Remember that lifestyle modifications and controlling these modifiable risk factors are going to be paramount. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we hope you got something out of this lecture.